Order in the court. The accused was charged with negligent conduct under Section 302 of Penal Code. If the accused were found guilty, they will be sentenced to pay $70 million to the prosecutor. Today, the prosecution side is represented by Karen, while the defendant, Baby Powder Company, will be represented by Tara. Prosecution, state your case. Your Honor, many people apply powders either directly to the genital, perineal, or rectal area after bathing, or even indirectly to underwear, sanitary napkins, or tampons. These powders tend to contain talc because of its softness, absorbency, and lack of clumpiness. Over the years, there's been building evidence that supports the claim that the talc in this powder is associated with an increased risk of developing ovarian cancer. In one study, one study published in the International Journal of Cancer examined the association of talc use and ovarian cancer. The researchers asked subjects how frequently they applied powder either directly to the genital or rectal areas or indirectly through sanitary napkins, tampons, or underwear. The researchers also asked other details, such as the type of powder, age begun, and number of years used. The study found that regular daily use of talc in the genital area was associated with 33% increase in ovarian cancer risk compared to non-users. There was no apparent risk associated with talc used only in non-genital areas. Another study published in Obstetrics and Gynecology also found similar results. In this study, 235 women were interviewed and asked similar questions concerning their exposure to talc. The study found that those women who used baby powder in their perennial area for more than 10 years on a daily basis had a significantly elevated risk of developing ovarian cancer. So this data that I've presented supports the claim that lifetime use of perennial talc may increase your risk of ovarian cancer. Your Honor, the prosecution has only mentioned the correlation between talc powder and ovarian cancer. We should know by now that correlation does not equal causation. So how exactly do you think talc powder causes ovarian cancer? One plausible explanation for this associated risk is that talc particles can migrate to the upper genital tract. In one study, it was found that microspheres that are 5 to 40 micrometers in diameter, which is the same size as talc particles, were able to migrate from the vagina to the upper genital tract. It's hypothesized that once the talc ascends the female genital tract, it directly interacts with the ovarian surface epithelium. This leads to local inflammation, which is characterized by an increase in cells dividing and elevated levels of chemicals that promote inflammation called cytokines. Well, the studies conducted probably looked at the use of talc powder that contains asbestos, which has been banned in talc powder since 1976. Therefore, recent studies that look at talc powder should not find any association between talc powder and ovarian cancer. Even with the removal of asbestos from powder, the risk estimates from recent studies have shown similar results to earlier studies, which reduces the chance that asbestos contamination confounded these findings. If we can't use baby powder, then what can we use? Well, there's a lot of different talc-free alternatives to baby powder, like cornstarch, baking soda, and tapioca starch. Based on all the evidence, I find the defendant guilty. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.